Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is May 12th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. The Women's Health Protection Act protecting the reproductive freedom of women was passed by the House of Representatives last year, but it failed to advance in the Senate. The effort was revived after a leaked document from the U.S. Supreme Court suggested that it may strike down its own decision that legalized abortion nationwide. House Democrats marched through the Capitol to the Senate earlier Wednesday chanting, my body, my decision, before bringing legislation to the floor to codify the standards set by the decision into federal law. Unfortunately, they did not have the votes to meet the 60 vote filibuster threshold to clear and advance the bill. Protests of the impending U.S. Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade have erupted around the country. And it's your turn to take a stand. As of March 13th, 2022, we, the feisty women of the world, demonstrate that we demand protection for our reproductive freedom with the Protect the Pussy protest, which invites all women to one, arm yourself for your own personal protection, two, abstain from sex with men, and three, demand vasectomies for males over 16. The Protect the Pussy protest will last until Roe v. Wade is protected or equivalent legislation is introduced. Subscribe to thefeistynews.com for more info. In other news, women under the Taliban rule are now ordered to cover up head to toe and only go outdoors in the company of men. The new burqa decree comes just months after leaders of the Taliban in Afghanistan promised to promote women's rights. At this moment, the country faces economic and humanitarian disaster with record numbers of unemployment and widespread hunger. As leaders of the Taliban feel the crush of despair, they seem to turn around and tighten the reins of women instead of empowering us so that we can help uplift them. Imagine what would happen if the Taliban decided to promote more education for women and allow women more freedom to help them figure out a way out of their economic slump. Subjugating women is a loss for everyone. In other news, when you think about the women you meet on a day-to-day -day basis, you might judge them based on the clothes they wear, the way they present themselves, and the smile that they have that demonstrates their success. Even when they try to hide their pains, there's still telltale signs that they simply cannot. Today, I want you to meet Gabby Valsills, a clinical psychologist with a background in trauma-informed, emotion-focused therapy. Gabby, welcome to the Feisty. Can you help us to understand the signs a woman has been traumatized in her life? and why it's important to acknowledge them. Yes, thank you so much for having me on The Feisty. It's so important to look for these signs. As we're women walking through the world, we've been through so many things, and it's so important to have more compassion for the different experiences of trauma or moments of feeling isolated and afraid that show up in the way that these women will feel in their bodies and also the way that they relate to people around us. So three really clear signs you can look out for is one, their body language. They will make themselves small, almost as if they're hiding from the world. It's really unapproachable if you look at it from the outside, but really it's this feeling of wanting to hide from other people. Number two is that woman will be overly apologetic really unable to ask for what she needs or what she wants. So from the outside, it'll be really unclear um, what her preferences are. And even her communication, it might seem very vague, like you really can't even get to know her. And number three is women with trauma will be unable to form solid relationships. So no long lasting friendships, maybe hard trouble finding partnerships. 
it'll be hard to have a safe and touching communication and relationship that looks confusing. It might seem like they are distant or overly independent or even pushing you away. So that's when the compassion really comes in to knowing that there has to be something behind those fears and that insecurity. And even though we might not know exactly what it is, it helps to have just the benefit of the doubt of holding space for their experience, even if it doesn't make sense. Thank you, Gabby, for this insight. It's so important to recognize when a woman is hurting internally so that we can be careful not to add to this pain. Please give traumatized women a chance to heal. If you truly want to help a woman heal, do it with kindness. It's time for a break. Have you ever carried the weight of being abused and felt like no one would care? When we come back, you'll meet a woman who is standing up for herself by sharing her abuse secret publicly for the first time. We'll be right back. My heart for homemaking flows through my hands into each knot of my work. My name is Natalie and I'm the owner and maker of Fringe and Free. I started my business because I wanted more home decor handmade with natural elements. My style is earthy, minimal, and warm. I want to express life, peace, and joy. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Have you ever been abused but felt like you couldn't tell anyone because you didn't want to disrupt everyone's lives? You protected the abuser and you feel like you're the only one suffering in a situation. I know what it's like because I've been there. Yes, me too. Today, I introduce a new segment called Abuse is Not a Secret, where I allow women who have been abused to share their stories openly without judgment so that they can be heard. Today, we'll meet Kezia, a 25-year-old woman who shared a public Instagram post that claims she was repeatedly raped by her high school band director. Due to legal constraints, Kezia cannot mention his name anymore, but I can. Michael D. Scott. Go on, Kezia. We're listening. Hi, my name is Kezia, and I was sexually abused by my band director at South Howard High School. Um, whew, it started back in 2014 when I attended the school. I believe I was 17 years old at the time. Um, you know, he was my band director. I looked up to him. Like, I looked up to all of my band directors at the time. And um, he was someone I admired because he was very well respected. He is very well respected in his community. And, um, you know, he had a lot of connections. And I was just like, that's someone I aspire to be because I was doing music at the time. I played the flute and the piccolo. And it's something I wanted to continue and take into high school. I mean, I'm sorry, to take into college and university. Um, so he definitely had a lot of my trust. And he knew that I confided in a lot of my traumas to him. For example, like issues that were going on at home with my mom. They never had a good relationship. And he definitely twisted and used that against me, um, which is how he was able to gain power over me. But the sexual abuse started when I was 18 years old. I remember the week I turned 18, he was just like, oh, you get to have sex now with anyone you want. You're of age. Of course, at the time, I was like, that's weird. Like, Okay, yeah, but I'm thinking about going to college, university, and like focusing on music. I have all these competitions coming up. Like, why would you mention something like that? And from then on, it was, uh, I guess that was him opening the door to start the abuse, which followed after. Um, he definitely used alcohol as a gateway. So I remember us being on Hollywood Beach at one of the bars, little tiki bars, and he would just make us drink, drink, drink. He knew I hated spicy drinks. He would always give me fireball and he would force us to drink and would watch me drink. Um, then he would rent a hotel. By that time, I had like, you know, I'm pretty drunk, I don't even know what's going on because I'm also 18, so liquor is new to me and it's affecting me in a different way. And I just remember being in the hotel room with bottles on the table and he just grabbed me and was, literally just having sex with me right on the bed. Like, never put on a condom, never nothing. And he just, I would beg him to stop and he would just keep going. 
Another time was in the band room auditorium. Um, we were sitting there getting ready for a concert and he was just like, let's sit down here. So we sat in the, you know, in the, in the audience, we sat in the audience and he forced me to give him head even though I was literally begging him not to. He grabbed the back of my head and forced me down onto, onto him. So those are just two little cases where that have happened that I'll speak on for right now. So it has definitely affected my relationships and it sucks because last year I got into a healthy relationship but I can't seem to commit, I can't find it in me to commit to anyone no matter the guy, no matter how great they are. And it has definitely cost me some really good guys. It has cost me some relationships and friendships just cause so a lot of people aren't built like that and they don't think that's okay. And you know, that's how I operate. I'm trying to break it. But it has also affected my trust, especially in men. I never feel safe or comfortable around them. My anxiety is like, I'm always like shaking. If anyone like touches me from the back, I jump. Like small things like that. Well, not even small because those are big things, but it definitely affects the way I think and I view marriage. I don't want to get married. Um, I have no desire to because for right now, that's the picture I have um, of marriage and I don't want that. I've had seven years to reflect on this and I also didn't want to say anything because he does, you know, have a beautiful family and they don't deserve this because it wasn't their fault, it wasn't their doing. But at the same time, it's been eating me and destroying me and it's not fair it's for me to be the victim or the survivor, I'm sorry, and just let it overtake me when he's living his life freely. Um, and yeah, I was tired of it eating at me and I wanted to release it and let it go and give it back to its owner. And that's what I'm doing, finally. We hear you, Kezia, and we believe you. Thank you for the gift of speaking out so that other women will know that they can and should speak out too. If you or someone you know has been a victim of Michael D. Scott or any other abuser and you're tired of carrying the weight alone, reach out to me and I will have you on the feisty so that you can be heard. Abuse is not a secret. As for you, Michael D. Scott, you are a monster. You saw a little girl who didn't have anyone she could trust and instead of protecting her, you became a predator, using her and raping her for your own pleasure. You know what? I hope you die in jail and then I spit on your grave. You are a monster! Welcome to the fight.